So, so God made a farmer. That's, that's the way I view things. All right? And that was our barn that we just lost here last year, so I always like to throw that in there. So here's a little bit of background around, about myself. Uh, you can read it much faster than I can, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Just like Jolene wanted to tell you a story about her personally, same with me. I was adopted. I was adopted by a great mother and father. I had great brothers and sisters. My one sister is kind of questionable, but no, just kidding, Cass. Just kidding. Just kidding. But it, I, I learned to be thankful, you know, very thankful for what I was given. And so that's what everyone should do. Uh, so there's a little bit about my farming. And when we do a farm tour on the topless bus this afternoon, we'll have a blast. We will teach you, I will show you you know, what we can do in agriculture to make a difference. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I was water quality certified by the MDA back in 2016. Wasn't even trying, it just kind of fell right into my lap because we were doing good things. Me and my dad, very proud that he got to see that. Uh, and then in the fall of 2017, we got certified organic on, a third, well, on the first like 15 acres. Every year I just kept on adding and adding. Now I'm, about 240 acres organic, and the rest is another 500 is conventional. On Superior Cannabis side, which I'm a part of, we uh, got water quality certified for ourselves, for a company, because it was before under my name, and we wanted to separate that out so Superior had its own water quality, because I think that's really important. And when you have a store in Duluth, right on Lake Superior, guess what? People really care about water up there, just like everyone should. And then we get we're certified organic from the beginning under my name. Now it's under Superiors too. So we are a company that's doing it right. You know, if you look up a picture on a hemp field or any website and they show beautiful plants, but it's in bare soil, guess what? Jolene just talked to you about gotta have healthy soil to create healthy plants. And you can you can grow big quantity, but it's not the same quality. And that's what I'm after in all the farming I do is quality, not quantity. All right, so soil health. This is the technical term that every university, Minnesota Department of Ag Extension talks about. And you can read it, but as a farmer, I don't really care because I don't go by scientific data. I don't go by what the norm says, just like Jolene is saying, oh, you know, fats, uh, USDA or FS or stuff like that says that fats are bad for you. No, they're not. Unhealthy fats are bad for you. Good fats are good for you. And so I'm a farmer, so I look at things differently. I use my senses and I really think all of us should. If it looks bad or if it actually looks too good to be true, that's probably bad. If it smells bad, who, who else has noticed that when you buy produce at the grocery store and you throw it in the fridge and Literally one day later, that food is going rotten. Mm -hmm. Has anyone had that problem? Oh my gosh, that, is, that means there's no nutrients in that. It's, it's dead, it's, it's filled with space, but no real nutrients. And that's why we're overeating because everything we eat does not have the nutrients. Our nutrient dense food has decreased from 1940s to now. You have to eat, I believe it's eight oranges to equal one orange back then. No wonder why we're starving. Our gut's telling us we need to eat more because we're not getting the nutrients. And that's why regenerative agriculture is so good because we can put it there. And so to me, that's when soil was healthy. But guess what? The United States, we came in, we conquered that, we took care of all the buffalo, got rid of them. That's not the way you do things. But what I try and do is I try and mimic that and I put my cattle out there. We will we'll be out in the field, the cattle won't be out in the cover crop fields, we'll go driving around in it, but we'll see them in a the pasture. But I mimic everything. And of course, when I do this on the farm, the soil health, as it has increased, it has a ripple effect. It affects so many things. Whenever I talk to legislators, tell them regenerative agriculture is the best spot to put the money because guess what? I can clean the water. I can produce healthier food. I can do so many things. I can help our community. 
All right, every water utility plant that's out there cleaning water that's coming out of the river, like up in the cities, all those utilities, that's just river water. They pull it out, they clean it, and lots of times they clean it, and guess what? They go throw it back in the river downstream, which is ridiculous. That's what happened down in Des Moines, Iowa a couple of years ago. But if you can get water, healthy water, and keep the pesticides and the chemicals and the fertilizer out of the water, less job, less money it's spent. But, so soil health has a ripple effect on the environment, on the ag economy, which you guys don't care about unless you don't mind high-priced food. So it does affect you. But then also on human health, which that's why Jolene was talking. I wish she could have been here today because she is phenomenal. We will get you the slides and you can, you can see it for yourself. I know I'll have to do that. But the ripple effect for me is, guess what? It increases my soil health and my worms come and all of a sudden I'm getting much more nutrients available without applying synthetic fertilizers. And I still do a little bit because it's a long road to get there, but when I do good things, good things happen. Uh, so me as a farmer, I got environmental storms, large rain events. It's hard for me to get things planted so I can see how farmers get trapped in the thing that I gotta go big, I gotta go synthetic, I gotta do all that. But in the long run, it's, it's hurting us. Right here actually shows desertification. Y'all remember the apple? How much of a little sliver of food we have to grow on? Well, now we're getting smaller and smaller. And typically they say, oh, take the animals off, they're destroying it. If you ever want to look, watch a good, uh, uh, what's those podcasts? Uh, what's those short, TED Talks. Alan, Alan uh, Savory, he was in charge of Africa and he determined that they, it was the livestock that were killing, it was the elephants. It was his name that went on the list and said, we need to get rid of, I think it was 20,000 or 40,000 elephants. And they did that. The, the government did that. They killed them. And then he realized for the next 20 years that that was not the right way to do it. You need the livestock. You need, you know what I need? I need my cows to go poop on every single acre. I really do. That's why on my ground, every animal gets out on every acre sometime during the year because I need that biology to get into the soil so I can in turn grow a healthy plant and put it in your gut. And so that's how I do it. But we don't have much to work with, guys. And of course, the way of the conventional farming is, you know, massive pesticide, insecticide. And I get it because that's what we were taught. Yesterday we taught 160 farmers that no, we can do it differently. So it, it takes a while, but the farming is getting better, but we really need you consumers to put your money where your health is, and that's in regenerative farming and where you, how you buy food. But we're dropping into everything. Insects, animals, it doesn't matter. They're all going down. There's another one, I ain't gonna do it. I had that problem last year too, but uh, right here, poor soil health. Believe it or not, that was one of the worst disasters ever because that was Chernobyl. And guess what they did? They said, nothing's gonna grow here for 100 years. Well, they got rid of one thing. What do you think it was? Man, Man exactly. Oh, and women, they're just as bad as us men. <laughs> but they got rid of them. And guess what else they planted? Anyone got an idea what they planted at Chernobyl? And they actually just did it at the uh, Japanese reactor too that Mel went had problems with. They planted hemp. Oh, really? They used that hemp plant to help clean the soil and help get it back alive. There's a reason why the hemp plant's been around for since the days of time. And you can go back biblical, you can go back to George Washington, Tom, Thomas Jefferson. To actually have farmland back then, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, you had to have hemp seeds in your hand. You had to have in your possession because he was such a versatile tool. Henry Ford actually came out in 1944 with a car made of hemp, and it ran on hemp seed oil. And I've watched the video where he's taking a sledgehammer, hitting the fenders, and it bounced right back. Boy, you know, that, that'd be nice, because my daughter gets into accidents all the time. Just kidding, Chris, just kidding, just kidding. But it's just amazing, but soil health, if you give it a chance, 
it can get better, but we chronically are doing things. We're chronically doing things to our body. We're chronically doing things to our soil. And now me as a farmer, I also deal with economic storms of the egg economy. We're almost forced into using products and using chemicals. And it's a multiple to the farm, the farm insurance. Uh, oh, Mark, call me, where's Mark? Oh, he's not in here. But we are almost pushed into this field of putting on synthetics. Guess what? People are making a ton of money on it, except for the farmers and except for you consumers. And of course, 2,4-D, that's a chemical that was introduced. All of a sudden, the revenue and income started splitting. And then after the war, World War II, which during World War II, guess what Americans did? They had to do gardens because all the food went to the military. They called it victory gardens. And it worked because that was the healthiest, strongest generation we ever produced. Guarantee a 13-year-old back then doing a victory garden compared to a 13-year-old that can't run anything but a phone. Yeah, not even close to the same thing. But they introduced 10,000 pesticides in those couple years after the war because we had all this manpower and technology put towards killing people. So now they want to put it towards what? Oh, killing plants, killing insects. But it didn't help us because we're starting to split. Glyphosate was introduced. And it wasn't on the fields, but it was introduced and it could be used. But then in the 1996 era, 92, GMOs, and we could start spraying Roundup on our crops. And guess what? Jolene brought up leaky guts. Roundup, glyphosate, is the first thing that'll cause you leaky guts. But the worst part is, it's not you that it's the worst on. It's the next generation, and then the generation after that. And right here, human health. We've definitely declined. We produce a ton of food in the world. Oh, we can't do organic, but what are we producing? We're producing inflammation. But guess what? Superior cancer back there, the hemp plant does an awesome job on anti-inflammation. Your gut, inflammation, that's leaky gut. All these diseases are really, cancer is inflammation. So hemp really helps. Grant, I'm gonna always, I have to tell you, talk to your doctor first before if you have any major medical problems. Uh, if you have med major medical problems, but realistically, the cannabis is an amazing plant and it can, can help you. And so diabetes, autism, I'll go through that a little later, but human health, 1960, 4% of the entire population had chronic disease. Nowadays, well, no, that was seven years ago, so it's even higher now. We see it. There's a reason why all these medical hospitals are getting bigger and bigger and fancier and richer. Nurses are getting paid more? Less, Less exactly. Autism has doubled. Who, who has autism in the family? in their family. Yep. It's gonna get worse and worse and worse. And by the year of the projection, is by 2035, that's gonna go up so high that one in three people will have autism. Guess what? You're not gonna be a great country with one in three people in autism. Russia, they're doing terrible things, but guess what they just did? They just made it so all farmland is organic. Not that that's all, I, I, and there's another uh, country that did that too, but I caution, that's not a good thing because you can't take a farmer who's addicted to using chemicals and the soil is addicted to everything and then just drastically throw them out there. I'm not gonna take a drug act and then go tell them to work on a high rise building because they're not, they need to get healthy. So I caution, it's gotta be a slow movement, but we can move it. One or two men have cancer, everyone knows Cancer's on the rise. Can I get a hands for that? Yep, that's, why is that the norm, guys? That should not be the norm. What you eat matters. One in four people have fertility, well, except for me. I don't have fertility, I've had plenty of kids, so no problem there. <laughs> but there are, more and more people have fertility. It's a good way to have a country, you know, Russia, China, whatever they wanna do, be, be number one in the United States. A good way to do it is let us do it to ourselves with our food. 
Now we spend 700 billion on military in the US. Is that one of the largest in the world? Yep, it is. Too bad it's dwarfed by what we spend on chronic disease management. We spend seven times that just for chronic disease, which is a problem you might have that'll linger for three to six months. And most diseases go a whole lot longer than that, right? There is the autism rates. That's how we can say that by 2035, that's a projection. And Jolene brought up oils. Actually, healthy animals produce good fat that you can use for cooking. Vegetable oils, any kind, don't do that. They do not have the same things. I'm not a nutritionist, so I'm not gonna try and explain it to you, but Jolene could. So next year, hopefully we have her in person. And here's the graphs of everything else. And really, I should put that on the economic ones for farming because a lot of it coincides. Look at 1990s, 92. Everything is starting to fly up. And of course, cancer. New England, for generations, was always a hot spot for cancer, always. And so if cancer is hereditary, it should take a generation to move it somewhere else. But literally, we ran from that being the hot spot to now the, the southern parts are. And guess what? The cancer rates are going up there. Look at the river uh, Mississippi watershed. All that water, all that farmland, all runs water down there. And guess what? Glyphosate, it's a water soluble. But it's not just Roundup. It's everything we're doing. It's you city people putting concrete on your yards and letting water run off. Wherever you can, less concrete's better. That's how you soak water in it. Because if it's not, it's going to pull everything down the street. Have you seen what's in your street? Cigarette butts, oil, gas, everything. It's, it's terrible. Now, COVID-19, this taught us a lot of things. Viruses, I'll, I'm a big Zach Bush fan, and Jolene does a great job kind of explaining a lot of this stuff, but we're worried about one virus. Well, there's 10 to the 31 viruses in the air. That's how many zeros. Can we fathom that number? No, we can't. Can we understand any of those viruses? Maybe like, 20, 30, 100, that's still such a small percent, it doesn't matter. Viruses have been here from the beginning and they'll be there at the end, long after we're gone. A newborn's baby stool has 10 of the seven viruses. I loved how Jolene said, what do babies do? They stick stuff in their mouth. They are literally upgrading their DNA because that's what a virus does, it helps you upgrade and adapt to your environment. So every time you see a baby put something in, don't say, no, 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 that's bad. No, it's not. That's how they adapt to their environment. And when plants and animals are stressed and need to adapt to the environment, that's when they emit new viruses. Well, guess what? Do you think plants and animals are under stress? You ever seen a, most of the steak, most of the meat that comes in grocery stores? You know what those feedlots look like? Yeah. That's why I'm gonna sit here and tell you that my regenerative farming practice where the cows are out grazing like those buffalo were, man, it's hard to beat. And the only bright spot of this whole pandemic is it showed us our weakness in supply chains. And I'm not talking toilet paper, guys, all right? <laughs> Even though I did stock up, uh, is the food. That's what matters. You can, you can have everything, but if you don't have food and water, you don't have nothing. And so I'll start supporting local food, backyard gardens. We're gonna talk a little more about that later. Uh, direct farm sales, CSAs, neighbors helping neighbors. And take the stress off the environment, and that'll take the stress off of us. So how do I help soil health? I question everything. Every time I see a commercial on TV during the Super Bowl to add this to my farm, well why? Are you gonna make money off it or am I? Because I know chances are, Whoever is trying to sell me something is the one making the money. Now, if you believe everything, you'll fall for anything. This is the commercials that you, or this is the ads that used to be put out. DDT is good for me. Right on, right? What do I use to make healthy soil, healthy backyards? I use seeds. 
And guess what? I don't do a corn soybean seed or just a grass seed. I use diversity. What does everyone here have in their backyard? What's the main crop? Grass. grass. Guess what? Grass is the third largest crop in the United States, right behind corn and soybeans. Why? Start putting pollinators in. Get to your local soil and water. Uh, James Fett here in Moore County does a great job of putting out, helping people put out backyard pollinator strips. That brings your bees in, that brings your healthy insects. Uh, Pacelli just, they got to close down the street right in front of their place. What did they do? They made it all grass. Like, oh great, so now they get to mow more, use more fuel, guess what? They're probably gonna spray it, and that's a kid place. To me, I told them, I said, well why not put a pollinator strip in there? Why not put a chaos garden? Get food. Wouldn't those kids learn a whole lot more by going out and seeing what a plants look like growing your food? Because every kid does not think that food comes from the soil. It comes from Walmart. That's where they think it comes from. And I use roots. Those seeds, best technology in the world. I'll put it up against anything out there. And Grant, a cell phone nowadays can go to the moon. That's the power of the technology. But a little seed, I'm so small you can barely see it, can sit in the soil for hundreds of years. And when the right conditions arrive, it can grow to be a big giant oak tree. And it can weather storms, cold. Technology's not gonna be able to do that. And of course, this is what your yard looks like. One monocrop on top, one rooting system on the bottom. I want plant diversity. We will show you that on the bus tour this afternoon. And we are gonna have fun. And that's what underground looks like for me. I have all different things out there. And of course, I integrate livestock. That's why I can tell you that my cattle fat is much better than the fat you get. You know, when they tell you fat's bad, it's not that kind of fat. It's the other kinds. And of course, I already showed that one. So you don't have livestock, right? Or no, you got chickens, though, in the cities. Are you liking them? I love them. Are they teaching you something? A lot. They do. <laughs> Animals will teach you. All you gotta do is stop and look. Guess what? Dr. Zach Bush, he's, he's a three doctor guy, and please look him up. Uh, he has a cancer facility, and he actually started with the same simple way of, you know, massive radiation, chemo, and he switched because it wasn't working. But what he does now is, oh, you have cancer? Okay, come to my place, I think it's in Arkansas, where it's old growth forest, so he has all that old biology in the soil, and then he tells them to get a dog. Why do you think he tells his cancer patients to get a dog? Companionship. What's that? Companionship. Companionship, yeah, but there's more. What do dogs lick? Huh? They lick, they lick you, and guess what? They clean themselves, and they don't use toilet paper, so now you know what they lick, <laughs> all right? And guess what, what was Jolene talking about? And the little pills. I'm not kidding. That's the biology that you get from going to the bathroom is the biology that we need in our guts, that we need in our soil. It sounds gross, but antibacteria on everything is not good. All right, we need more because that's how we adapt to our environment. So, I'll see, you don't have livestock? So you guys have grass. Think about the worms and the microbes and the insects, bacteria, fungi, bees. You have huge possibility, guys, unless you are doing, doing just a monocrop grass. You need to get more in there. That's gonna be your goal that I want you guys to do is make a difference in your yard, because I'm doing it on my farm. And 162 other farmers came here yesterday to do the exact same thing. But it's not just the farmers that are wrecking this, it's, it's everyone, it's everyone. So, local produce, Victory Gardens, I talked a little bit about that. Canning produce, Cass is gonna talk about that later. Farm Grex sales, they are popping up, and guess what? It's putting the money in the farmer's hand and not the middleman that's making all the money. Uh, local garden centers, super fresh. We got gardener Trisha back there, she's gonna help us later, teach us a little bit on that. Local CSAs, if you can't do your own garden, that's okay because there's someone out there that wants to grow a garden and will do it in their CSAs. Uh, and work and you know, share with the neighbors, share with your community, because that's how we make communities thrive. So, 
Switching gears again, so how does Superior Cannabis Company grow hemp? Do we grow it the conventional way where we dig up the soil and we spray everything and all oh, there's problems with insects we spray? No, that's checkers, that's easy. Just like in farming, the old conventional way for me was checkers, same thing every year, Pl apply a ton of pesticide, fungicide, chemical, whatever. Now I play chess, now I think I use my plants to fight other plants and to help me assist to keep it less weeds, less bugs, or actually I bring more bugs. When we first started this, Jeff, remember we planted hemp and you said, oh, you can't have sunflowers out there because I read that you know, that's gonna attract you know, insects. You're damn right, we're gonna attract every insect. And we're gonna let, what do you do now every year? What do you buy? Insects. You buy ladybugs. And that's what we use to fight in aphids on the plants. We use predators. For every one predator you kill, or one insect you kill, like a mosquito, you also kill, I think it's 1,700 other good beneficial insects. So be careful with what you put on. You know what, if you grow lemongrass or something like that around your yard, you can help stop mosquitoes naturally without hurting anything. That's typical hemp production. And Grant, they can grow some big, beautiful buds. Really nice hemp plants, but remember what I said about quantity over quality? And that's what the soil looks like. That's actually the neighbors, but that's how a lot of the hemp fields grow look too. And when, you, when I talk about soil like that, the soil is naked, hungry, thirsty, runny fever. And it's also drug addicted. It's also shelterless. So now they're growing hemp in a field like that. Do you really think that they built these pyramids in the middle of the desert? No, they had beauty around them. But when the food system dies and the water dries up, they have to move off. But here's how we plant. And I'm very sad to say that we don't have massive plants this year. We had such a good year last year, we really didn't need to. So we, we went from 9,000 plants down to like a couple hundred at that, and we put them in last minute just to show a little something. But farmers, what do we do? Oh, corn prices are low, guess what? We plant more corn. Yeah, it, it, it's ridiculous, but we're stuck with the middleman in, the, in there. But superior cannabis, we're actually growing farm to table, farm to store. Everything right over there is, that hemp has been growing from our farms. Now, I like to recycle nutrients for the hemp plants, and I, instead of putting a bunch of fertilizer on there, we let plants do it. Above the earth, above the ground, is unbelievable amounts of nitrogen. Why would I go buy a thing of nitrogen at the store? If you don't think you, if you think you need nitrogen for your garden, plant a plant that's gonna give you nitrogen, that can soak up that nitrogen. Uh, I plant brassicas, we're gonna show that out in the field, pollinators, plants are always recycling. I've got a third organic. The big thing with organic is, I wanna recycle nutrients. I want plants to pull it up and put it back down. It just keeps on, it's a big rotation. When I grow a cash crop, those plants grab what they need as that nutrients is recycling. And the cool thing is about what I'm doing on the farm and what we're doing at Superior is, it gets people excited about agriculture. Agriculture actually has one of the highest suicidal rates there is. That's pretty sad. We, we want to kill ourselves because we grow you guys food. That's not right. Financially, it's terrible. We're not putting out a good product, but when we do things like this, past, present, and future generations get excited. And I used to always just say future generations until I met a 75-year-old that said, I'm gonna change the way I farm because this is exciting. I like this idea. So now it's everyone getting excited. And when in turn, when I do this, I capture more carbon. Do you guys care about carbon? You better, because that's, Climate extremes, I like to say climate extremes because it's not really climate change, it's climate extremes, we are getting drastic. I still get the same amount of rain on my farm that I did 20 years ago. Oh, but I get it in like five minutes. You know, or I don't get any at all. So biggest things about plant and garden failures. I, this was a farming one, but it's the same thing with gardens. You don't plant any. You'll never know if you don't try. Thinking you can't make it work, we coached wrestling, Jeff, me and Jeff, for 18 years. Guess what? If a kid went out there and thought he was going to lose, 
damn right he was going to lose. Same thing with the garden. If you don't think you can do it, you're not going to. But if you have a positive attitude, you will. Network with other farmers, gardeners, whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Not realizing everything is connected. So if I'm spraying something, guess what? It's going to have an effect. Using the right seed at the right time. Hopefully, Trisha's going to help us a little bit with that. But it's just about networking with farmers or, or gardeners and whoever you want to help you. And this one is probably my main one because it doesn't matter if it's farming, gardening, your social life, your family, your community. If you have, for every action, there is a reaction. But the thing is, you get to choose. Is that positive or negative? Are you going to go into the gas station and be rude to the clerk? Because guess what? Now that clerk's going to be rude to the next person, and the next person, and the next person. So if you give them a smile and a thank you, you, know, you just made their day better, and now it's going to have a ripple effect. Oh, yeah, soil health has a ripple effect, doesn't it? Just like everything else. And not listening to Mother Nature. We've done a terrible job of it, and she is screaming at us right now to change and do things. And really, the pandemic is no different. It's from what we've been doing. But everything I do and everything we can do together has endless benefits for all. Financially, hey, I don't have to cut corn. I can just let them graze my grass. Health-wise, much better. Environmental and future generations. That's my grandson, one of them. And that's my dad. He always said everybody has a story to tell. I fought that for years. He was right, wasn't he? Because I just told you a story is what I really did. <laughs>